Live from the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by IPMNation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Again, thank you so very much for stopping by and welcome to the 371st episode of the number one rated show here on IPMNation.com. It is an honor to be hanging out with you. So really, seriously, thank you for stopping by. We have a pretty action-packed half hour here on IPMNation.com slash TR now. But for this segment, you're in to All Natural Being and the gong, as you just witnessed, heard round the world. Broadcast, as it happens, thanks to our friends at Telestream's Wirecast, as you know by now, right here on IPMNation.com, and now multicast live on Facebook and over on AllNaturalBeing.com and our app as well. But however you come to hang with us, we're always pumped to have you live. In the transitional radio uplink here in a suburb of snowy Columbus, Ohio, with rebroadcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, thanks to Wayne. You know how that goes. All the other usual suspects. Greetings wherever you are here in the garden of the mortals, the labyrinth of life itself. Not only is it your shot at running the table, But you get to level out wherever you see fit. You don't need someone's permission. You don't need anyone's permission. Here's your chance to be mouthwatering to yourself, to give yourself a thumbs up. It's in your blood. Now you just have to get your mind to remember it. That's why we're here, to be your amnesia buster, your friendly blue force, always putting your heart's highest priority top of the list. Plain and simple. Reinstalling. And reinstating the true wit, wisdom, and the wallop of your inner whisper. Think about that for a moment. What would your life be like if you could reboot your robust? If you would find your ferocious, commence right now your counterpunch, all in time to out-brutal the brutal. That is the cut and shuffle that fate can deal us on a daily basis. And once and for all, to bring your own bold, no apologies, no permission, no mashugana. Once and for all. But before we hit it this evening, I got a lot of pet peeves I want to go over. First, I want to say hello to my friends here in the United States and Canada, Mexico, the UK, my good friends in Ecuador, China, the Philippines, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, Italy, France, Nigeria, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Belgium, Sweden, Israel, South Africa, Egypt, Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Netherlands, Iran, Colombia, Greece, Ireland, Argentina, Peru, Austria, Poland, those of you joining us from all over the globe, as I say, it truly is great to have you here with us. And I am fired up, beyond a doubt, fired up, hold on there a minute, fired up to be hanging out with you this eve of Christmas. But you know what I love about riding shotgun, about hanging out with you? Is it just that? I get to hang out with you. So what are you waiting for? Here's our opportunity to mortal up. What do you say? 
Let's go kick in some doors. And I'm pretty fired up tonight. We have a somewhat different version of Lee Words Wednesdays, but Lee will be calling here in a little bit. Lee Rowley from Sales Copy Academy. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and let me say hello real quick, because once I get started, you know, it'd be impossible to uh, turn me off. So let me say hi to John and to Candace and to Henry. Hi, Henry. How are you, sir? And to Wayne. Thank you so much for joining us. Heather, great evening to you as well. Paul, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Bean. Why did I say Christmas? Did I say Christmas? You got to watch me, right? I got to shunt. Uh, John says, starting to sound like the micro machine guys with the list of those countries. Well, you know what it is, John? Was I wanted to get the list of the countries out pretty quickly tonight because there's so much more I want to talk about. Gobble, gobble, as Candace says. Marcia, thank you so much. Hello to you as well. Here's one of the pet peeves that I want to talk about this evening. Right? right I'm, 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 I get this email from someone that goes, oh, did you see this? Uh, 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 Oregon. I think I'm allowed to say it's in the state of Oregon. But let's just say a major university there. Oh, shunt. <laughs> yeah, boy, if you only knew, Heather. Uh, but a, a university in Oregon has decided that if you say Thanksgiving, I guess, or maybe if you celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, you're a racist. And I'm thinking, and maybe that's what got me started on this topic tonight. Good evening, Chris. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. Right? You ever get tired of being called a racist, sexist, misogynist? Oh, all the different lists. You ever wonder about the lists of ists, all the different things they can label you with because they want to bully you. They want to control you. They go, oh, if I throw out the term racist, well, no one's going to cook their turkeys tomorrow. No one's going to ask for extra stuffing. Oh, you could just send your stuffing to me. Um, no one's going to ask for an extra piece of uh, pumpkin pie. Oh, why? Oh, because you're a racist if you do. Oh, please. And that's the Poison Ivy League. That's what we're teaching the future leaders of our country, that if you celebrate Thanksgiving, it's racist. And then another thing, we're, since we're on the topic of bullies, let me just get this off my chest so we can get through the rest of the half hour. You ever wonder about this? You ever get so, uh, you ever get an email, go, here's your last chance. Here's your last opportunity. If you don't sign up before midnight, blah, 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 blah. I got seven emails today, which, right? Are you a racist, Brian? Yeah, well, I am. If you think saying Thanksgiving qualifies me as a racist, then sign me up for two scoops. All right? <laughs> sign me up for two scoops. So getting back to the email, I got seven of them today where people, basically, they want to say, oh, it's the fear of missing out, FOMO. Everyone, oh, you know, I'm so, I'm so excited about this program. I'm so excited about taking your money that you really got to get in before midnight tonight, right? You really got to get in before this. Seven emails. Doors are closing. Last opportunity. I'm shutting the down the funnel. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So I need to thank those people because I just what blocked seven different emails or unsubscribed or whatever it was. So I love now. Those emails drive me crazy. Alice, I'm with you. Paul says, nothing is right and everything is wrong nowadays. Too much PCBS. I'm with you. I'm with you, Paul. John says, where can I get one of those sweet Mortal Up t-shirts? Thank you very much, John. We're working on that right now, and uh, I'll let you know as soon as we have them, and, and, uh, and then I'll be grabbing some addresses and everything else and figuring out how I can uh, get them to you guys. Candace says, it's a day I count my blessings and family fun waiting on the Uncle Eddie to show up. Yeah, I think we all have those Uncle Eddies, don't we? <laughs> well, I'm the Uncle Eddie. I would say, if, if, if by Uncle Eddie, Candace, you mean kind of like the black sheep of the family, but always looking to get a laugh, then I would say I, in my family, I'm probably the Uncle Eddie. But if that's not the case, I don't want to disparage Uncle Eddie. Good old Uncle Eddie. All right, so let me go ahead and see, just in case, this is Lee calling in. Let's pick this up real quick. Let me go here. Good evening. Welcome to All Natural Being. Who's this? It's not Batman. It's not <laughs> Oh, Did you like my little bow tie? I thought, everyone, it's Lee Rowley from Sales Copy Academy, the official time sponsor, not only of All Natural Being, not only of our 24-hour marathon, but of our 81 to win coming up in February, the 81 to win world record, Guinness World Record attempt. So, Lee, thank you so very much for being that official. Oh, and all the good people at Sales Copy Academy. Thank you for being the official time sponsor. I super appreciate it. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, and you're most welcome. I'm thrilled to be a part of it. What's going on? How's everybody doing tonight? Well, let me say hello to Deb uh, quickly. Deb, thank you for joining us. Marie, thank you for joining us. Fallout Bob, yes. Now, be careful. 
Uh, John says Fallout Bob is in the house. <laughs> so, so is there any chance that Fallout, could you just pass the microphone <laughs> uh, to Fallout Bob for a minute and have Fallout Bob say hello? I, I, I think Fallout Bob may be smashed on cheap sherry tonight. I'm not sure. But, oh, now, come but we'll, on. Not we'll, another English. We'll see if we can wrangle him up for you. <laughs> Yeah, Not absolutely. another cheap <laughs> cheap sherry joke from across the pond, huh? Deb says, hi from <laughs> New Hampshire. Hi, Deb, to you as well. I hope it's not as cold as everyone was saying it is. Lee, here's one of the things. I want to talk tonight about gratitude, right? And and just being thankful be, to be in a position to be a great copywriter. But I just can't yeah. get it off my chest, right? This, this whole thing now, you're racist if you believe in Thanksgiving, or just an overall attempt for people to bully you with words. And then I made mention of the fact, you know, I got seven emails today where people were going, oh, wow. Oh, shared. Thank you so much. Wait a minute. Where's my little? Oh, here it is. <laughs> Even for me, Deb, I, gotta, I have to have uh, a ritual. It's actually louder than I thought it was going to be. Um, but, you know, all these people, oh, you have to order before midnight tonight. I'm closing the doors, shutting down the funnel, doing this, doing that. And then it dawned on me. It's almost like you're being bullied into doing it. Just like, oh, don't eat that turkey. Don't make me call you a racist. It's like, what has happened to the human mind where you just all this lists of this or you can be threatened with, oh, it, you have to do it right now or else. So I went through my email today, Lee, as you, as you know now at least, and I got rid of all those people giving me ultimatums. Do it by this time or else. So I said, all right, see ya. <laughs> you're out. So now it's off my chest. Uh, but we wanted to talk tonight, Lee, about gratitude, right? Just an sure. overall sense of what it means to you and, and how, as I say to people all the time, it's not only a great mantra for meditation, it's like the ultimate superpower, right? It's when, when you have that sense of gratitude for just having been left here another day to pull off whatever you want, it's got to just infuse you with what I believe is that superhuman power. What say you, brother? Absolutely. You know, I was thinking about this uh, a little bit earlier after we texted back and forth and think, you know, what am I What am I going to say about gratitude that hasn't already been set, you know, being as tomorrow's the Thanksgiving holiday in the United States, and that's what everybody's talking about, right? Right. But, you know, the way that I was taught gratitude, and I think the way that a lot of us are taught gratitude is, I think, more damaging than it is helpful. Because here's here's how I was taught gratitude. You, you should be grateful for the food on your plate because there are children starving in Africa. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You should, okay. be, you should be grateful for your health, you know, and if, and if you're not, then I'm going to take you to, you know, a, a children's cancer wing and let you see what, you know, what it's really like to not feel good. You Ooh, know, right. so this, the, the, the sense of gratitude was almost forced, right? you know, in, in, the, in the sense where, in order for me to have something, then it has to come at somebody else's expense. In other words, it's always it's always relative, you know. Sure. Uh, which to me that doesn't produce gratitude; that produces guilt. It's a good point. Because you know, if I have, uh, you know, if, if I have enough or I have a good experience in my life, there's a little voice in the back of my head that's always saying, "Yeah, but somebody else isn't getting to have this." Mm. You know. So it was um, contingent on another human suffering. Or at Correct. least it was always correlated in your mind. That's a very good point. Deb Sherman says here in the thread, too blessed to be stressed. I like that, Deb. That's a great way of looking at it, right? Too much going Absolutely. for us. Because what's the alternative, Lee? None of us has to be here at all, right? That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. So, I, you know, I've taken to looking at uh, cultivating a sense of gratitude more from a place of non-judgment. Okay. Uh, I will say that I'm great at it. In fact, I kind of stink at it most of the time. <laughs> and it's a, it's a daily you know, street fight to become more and more aware of of the things and look at look at them without judgment and to be grateful just that they are, not that they're mine and not yours. Yes. That I have because somebody else doesn't have. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. And I think it's a great way to teach it and a great way to lead it, Lee, because it's not about the grass is always greener. Well, I'm standing on the green side of the grass, so someone else must be standing in the dirt pile. Mm -hmm. It's just gratitude, as I say, you know, thankfulness without a target, right? The ability just to be thankful for what you've, what you have in life. 
And we talked to, earlier in the post today when we talked about how to level, you know, how to live life at a whole other level. It's very mm-hmm. well, I think at least for me, it's very well to be able to say, look at everything that's going on around me right now. At least I'm here to still perceive it. At least I'm here to still be steeped in the moment because the alternative is I wouldn't be here at all. And that at least is an underlying reason to be grateful, I would say. I absolutely think so. You know, for for what reason we're here, I don't know. What, for mm-hmm. what reason I'm here, I have no idea. And, and that's something that really bugged me from an existential level for a long time. But I don't think there's anything wrong with being here just to have those experiences. Mm-hmm. Just to see, you know, my, my, my dad always used to say, just to see what would happen next. Right. <laughs> Um, so, you know, so, and, and those things aren't always necessarily good or bad or, you know, as, so, you know, so maybe good, maybe bad, too sure. soon to tell, right? Right. Uh, but, so why not just have the experiences and appreciate those experiences without putting so much emphasis and so much, uh, so much stock in whether it's a good experience or a bad experience. Right. Or that it's a finite amount and that you have to mm. gobble up your, I'm bringing it all back to my eating habits tomorrow, but you have to gobble yeah. up more of the pumpkin pie so that someone else doesn't get it. Exactly. Right. And this goes back to the emails that you were talking about too. I mean, we you get seven emails that are saying, you know, you're going to miss out. This is yeah. your last chance. In other words, uh, you know, grab yours so somebody else can't have it. Yes. And I think you know, it just gets a while. You know, Deb says here, we are living in amazing times. Lee, how many times have you heard me say, or Henry, how many times have you heard me say, this is the absolute coolest time to be alive? Yeah. I really believe that. And probably if you spoke to me 100 years ago, or if I was alive 100 years from now, I'd be saying the same thing, right? No, mm-hmm. this is the coolest time to be alive. We are, in fact, <laughs> living in an amazing time because we are, you know, well, living. Exactly. You will you know, consider that that any of us, uh, you know, except for for maybe you know the the, the lowest of the lowest income uh, today, live better than kings lived five hundred years ago. Sure. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's yep. an absolutely amazing time. It, it, it's also a, a, a horrifying time in a way because I, I we seem hell bent on creating our own destruction at this point, but. That's another story for another show, right? Well, yeah, yes, in a way, but it's also one that we can focus on a little bit because what I always love about having you on for uh, uh, Lee Word Wednesdays is that order. I would say that in order to be a great copywriter, it's the same thing as being a great human being. Recognize what's going on around you in the moment at hand, mm-hmm. and then how do you cultivate? How do you harvest? How do you grab the yield? from this particular moment in all of time? Well, that's why I'm the crazy person who's walking around with a little voice recorder most of the time, and nobody (laughs) really knows why he's talking to himself, but he seems to do it quite often, and everybody just kind of stays away from him, and it it all works out okay. So (laughs) uh, for me, that's that's how I do it, just because uh, when when those things come and when I start noticing those things, they come so (laughs) rapid fire that... There isn't time to get to a laptop. There isn't time to get to a, a notepad. You know, I just have to be able to mm-hmm. turn on the voice recorder and just let it rip. Uh, you know, but just being able to do that to me has helped me to to see just how many of those rich moments there are in your in every day. Uh, you know, because we mm-hmm. tend to think of we tend to think of time uh, our lives as you know, kind of waiting periods between the big things, mm-hmm. you know, uh, right. you know, gosh, I can't wait till I go on vacation. Oh yes. gosh, I can't wait till this happens. Or yes. when, when, when this event happens, then I can really start living life. Yes. But we're, we're missing all of these small, beautiful, delicious moments every day that we could be fully immersing ourselves in. I love the idea of a delicious moment. I love the idea of looking at a moment like it's a piece of fabric and a piece of fabric that all these different threads had to go together to weave this particular moment in all of time. And and it, I've, I've been known to say before, it's like being on a cruise ship, right? Someplace cool. Let's say cruise ship to Alaska. Nah, everyone's frozen if you're listening to the Northeast. So let, um, <laughs> let's forget this. Let's say cruise ship to the Bahamas. 
and you're on this cruise. It's a 21-day cruise, Every all, all included, everything, all, everything you want to eat, everything you want to drink, it's all included. And you spend the time locked in the bathroom of your top floor state cabin. You got like a state (laughs) cabin suite and you spend all your time locked in the bathroom. Well, that's what it's like when we won't be appreciative of what we have in this particular moment and all the time go, oh, for my New Year's resolution or oh, for my birthday or oh, when I get this or oh, when I get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Right. When I get rid of this, when I get rid of that, when I get this, when I get that, oh, then I'm going to be happy. And I think that's where the concept of the seventh heaven, remember seventh heaven came in? And can you imagine people getting up there at the pearly gates? Who is it? Uh, Peter? St. Peter is at the pearly gates. And they go, oh, yeah, well, you know what? Really cool. I dig the fact that the elevator didn't go down. The escalator brought me up. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. But could I have the next heaven? Look, since you're busy stamping passes, could you just stamp mine to the seventh heaven? Because the first floor of heaven, it's nice, don't get me wrong, you know, the angels and the trumpets, the streets of gold, ambrosia. I get a little sick of ambrosia, i got to be honest with you. Could you stamp my passport and get me up to the seventh heaven? It's the same thing. When can we ever cultivate a sense of being appreciative, of being thankful, of having a sense of gratitude? As Henry says, we always have excuses to avoid being happy. And maybe that, maybe Henry's right, Lee. Maybe, Mm -hmm. uh, as he often is. Maybe just constantly looking outside of the moment, thinking that the grass is always greener. Maybe that's an excuse. I never really looked at it that way. Henry, thank you. Maybe that's an excuse because we just don't want to be happy. We want the people of Oregon State to tell us that we're racist because we eat turkey or, you know, any of the other things. Or, you know, oh, I'm closing this up. I, you got till midnight. Remember when we were Little League growing up? Uh, if you order before midnight tonight, we'll go ahead and double the size of your order. Right, right, right. Right. Well, now they don't even get with that. They go, I'm closing the doors. Garage doors coming down. Deadbolts going on. If I have window armor, it's sliding shut. It's locking you out. You've got eight hours and however many minutes left. And it's all a form of bullying. <laughs> Wayne says, are you talking about the same Henry I know? <laughs> I have to look down for just a moment to be able to like that <laughs> <laughs> and remember, there's really no way to get back at Wayne because he controls all the knobs. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. He, he can just shut you down. He can shut me down. All of a sudden, you'll yeah. be cut. You know, it sounds like, uh, you know, uh, it, it, someone in, at the Bering Strait talking over a ham radio. <laughs> Sarah, good evening. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. Lee and I Ooh, and everyone here in the thread, funny. we're talking about gratitude. We're talking about just being thankful in this particular moment in all of time. Because... You may not get another moment. Who knows? Heather says, it's only the west of the Cascades in Oregon, Portland snobs. (laughs) 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 Oh, Heather. (laughs) Well, look, I don't know if it's just Portland. because. Oh, here's another thing. Can I tell you something else that's bugging me, Lee, real quickly? And then you tell me what you think. Please do. Yeah. So the other day, you know, and you know how I'm about poison ivy league. I couldn't care. I I really couldn't care about uh, colleges and you know, all this and all that, but they're having a big game and it's Harvard against, let me say Yale. I could be wrong, but it's Harvard against Yale and Harvard ends up winning the game like 45 to nothing. But at one particular time, a guy does a really good run and he scores a touchdown, but the referees, Heather says, I live in Oregon, so I know. (laughs) Thank you, Heather, very much. (laughs) So the referees say, wait a minute, wait a minute. He flipped off. He gave the finger to the defensive back that blew the coverage and let the wide receiver in. So they call a technical foul. They call it back and this and that and everything else. So no touchdown. They disallow the yardage. Blah, 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 blah. But my pet peeve was this, Lee. Afterwards, I guess it's a full. It's not even a pet. It's like a raging peeve, right? Talk about low lives making headlines. The head coach at Harvard goes into the press conference and says, it was wrong, he knows it was wrong, blah, 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 right? Just throw this guy under the bus. Throw your team player under the bus, right? Except the next day. Do you know what I'm going to tell? You know how the story ends? The next day, a sideline photographer, you know, just with his finger on the shutter, you know, 30 frames a second kind of thing. Takes a picture. Takes a picture. And the offensive back was holding up number one. Wasn't flipping the kid off. 
wasn't giving them that. Well, he was giving them a finger. It was just the index finger. Like okay. that should make all the difference in the world. You've you just the attempt to water down the human mind is unbelievable to me. But in any event, the kid wasn't even guilty. Didn't flip the defensive player off. He did the number one sign. I'm assuming that's what index finger up in the air means. Number one, or no, 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 no. Maybe like that, right? Back and forth. No, 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 no. You're not. You're not going to be able to catch me. Yes. So or call your proctologist. Call your exactly what it is. Pull my finger. You know, maybe it was a fart joke. I don't know. All right, Wayne hasn't put the clock in yet, so I know I'm good, right? But here's what I can tell you. It wasn't giving the kid the finger. So instead of the coach saying, well, we're going to look at the tapes and we'll deal with it internally and this and that, he throws the kid right under the bus. He was wrong. He knows he was wrong. We don't stand for that. And it was the index finger. What the hell has happened to us? That's the question well, that I'll throw to you. Where's the integrity in that? Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, was, was, was there a follow-up that said, okay, I was wrong? No, I haven't seen it yet. Now, in or fairness... You know, maybe the coach is doing his lawn, the kid's laundry, taking him to dinner, putting gas in his truck. I don't know. You know, I'm sure the coach felt like crap afterwards. Good. Do you know what I mean? He should. But so that's yeah. what I'm wondering is what has happened to the human mind? What has happened to human wherewithal? So when Heather says, oh, it's just on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for those auditorily impaired. Um, Wayne has put up a graphic, an emoji, where you get to pick which of the two symbols. <laughs> See, only Wayne can get away with that because he doesn't even put his picture in the Facebook post, right? So if I go ahead and, and I say that word, what, what does that middle finger stand for? Or I say what the index finger stands for, well, I'm the one with the face all over. But Wayne can go ahead and put those emojis up and no one even knows what he looks like. Henry, you got to get a picture of Wayne so I can start putting it up. Oh, this would be a great time, Lee, to go. Uh, the views expressed by Wayne are not necessarily the views of All Natural Being, of its host, <laughs> or any of its sponsors. <laughs> Fallout Bob, there he is. Fallout Bollocks. How are you, Fallout Bob, my English You're brother from another mother? <laughs> hey, Lee was talking smack about you earlier, saying you were drinking bad sherry. You just can't stand for that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you know. Won't be having any of that. <laughs> Lee, I've blown this whole show. <laughs> I've blown this whole show. Is the that the same Wayne I know? No, it's definitely the Wayne I know, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> the advantage of being in the background. Yes, don't look behind the curtain. Have fun storming the castle. All right, Lee, I'm sorry. I blew this whole thing, but uh, I just thank you for listening to my pet peeves. Coaches throwing players under the bus for doing nothing wrong at all. Nothing wrong at all. And then you have real people that ought to have their call, their play called back, that say you're a racist if you celebrate Thanksgiving. So that's that's my point. I, we just going to have to stop paying attention to other people's opinions. I'm, I know. I'm serious. I think that God, most people worship as the God of other people's opinions, and it's just absolutely got to stop. I'm with you, brother, right? And I think that's one of the things I always dig about the time I get to spend with you. We were out the other day having lunch, and the young lady that walked up to us and said, oh, yeah. no, we've had our experts check. We're sure you're wrong. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, so big plans for tomorrow? Uh, we're traveling. Oh, great. Yes. Where are you headed? I mean, no, don't tell anybody where you're going. I don't want to. Right, I don't know where I'm responsible for that. All right, well, I guess it's snowing here in, uh, uh, where are we? New Albany, Columbus, wherever we are. It's, oh, yeah. okay. So well, I yeah, I'm no, I, I, I won't disclose the exact location, yes. but there will probably be banjos. So There'll probably be banjos. Um, Good. <laughs> and I'll be house-sitting, so don't anyone try anything. I'll be house-sitting for Lee. Right? That's the thing, brother. You can't ever admit you're going to be on the road. I'll be house-sitting for Lee and Carla, so don't even try it, Fallout. We'll know where to come and look for the goods. <laughs> <laughs> Deb, thank you very much. You have a blessed night as well. Oh, in our closing 90 seconds, this would be a good time for me to mention. And, Wayne, could you throw it here in the thread, please, since clearly I'm busy doing your job. Uh, since you're giving me the clock emoji to look at. Uh, Thinking Re-Envisioned will be coming up here now in 58 seconds. So, Wayne, could you please go ahead and post the link up here in the thread? And then what I'll mention quickly, Lee, if you don't mind hanging out with me, we'll do the end of the show together. Uh, tomorrow night, in case there's anyone hanging out by themselves, right? In case there's anyone's decided not to referee the family feud, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you as well, Heather, the family feud of politics and this and that, I'm going to be on tomorrow night at 8 o'clock so we can hang out together. So if you find yourself alone with a glass of bad sherry, 
Um, give me a <laughs> well, I'll be back here at 8 o'clock, and we'll go from there. Dallas, I'm so sorry to say hello and goodbye in the same breath. Lee, thank you so very much for joining us. We're going to go ahead and close out. Brother, have a very great Thanksgiving day, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. You too. Happy right. Thanksgiving. You're all right, buddy. Farewell. All right, so here we go. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and get out of here, make sure we have everything ready for the switch. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Mm-hmm.